Welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. It's the fourth Friday of the month where we're talking about business and success here in Las Vegas. We're back with Shamara Walker from SWHR Consulting. She's relatively new to Las Vegas. Your husband is in the military. Correct. Our last guest had spent some time in the military as was vet. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, I don't think we've had a military spouse on here before, <laughs> and we need to thank you for your service just as much as we thank our service members as well. Thank so you. thank you for your service. Um, you got you do a lot to support us, us veterans and our us active duty military personnel. So thank you so much for your service. Your company, SWHR Consulting, provides customized, cost-effective solutions to help simplify and streamline your HR needs. And she's going to help us learn today about what we should be thinking about as business owners for the HR and our businesses, and how she can keep us from getting into trouble before we get into trouble. <laughs> exactly. And I know I need all the help I can get staying out of trouble. <laughs> so. Thinking into result. Okay, that's from the last segment, but we did. We get some great questions. So if you've got questions for Samara, please type them into the into the box there, and we'll get them up here. So tell us how you ended up in Las Vegas why, and why you started your business. I always like to find out why business owners started their business. Yeah. So how I ended up in Vegas is my husband, as you mentioned, is in the military, um, and I'm truly excited to be in the Vegas market uh, because when we when my husband received orders, I was already in the process of starting my HR consulting firm. Um, my my focus was to always have the ability to help startups and small businesses in that area because they just really need that support. They don't really have the guidance and being able to provide that support and additional guidance is helpful in the beginning stages. And and that's so true and that's really what I want to dig in today because HR can get complicated yeah. really quickly. <laughs> it can get complicated really quickly even if it's just you. And I'm, you you know who I'm looking at. I'm looking at you, right? You business owners in Las Vegas. This HR thing can get really quickly. It's one of the major risk areas for your business. This is one of the few areas you can get into. You, you can really get yourself into trouble if you hire people and don't implement good, solid HR policies early on and consistently. So what are some of the things about HR that business owners or even someone who's thinking about a business hasn't, hasn't put a dime into it, doesn't have any product yet, but is just thinking about a business, what are some of those things we should be thinking about early on before we even hire our first employee as a business owner? As a business owner, it's very important to to think about the direction that you're trying to go with your business. It's very important to have a framework or a groundwork in place so that as you bring people into your organization, you have something you have something in place that allows them to essentially follow and grow with your your organization um, if you're if you're someone that is essentially starting up it's really important to document your process um, that is the biggest thing as a business owner as you you know as you're in it and you're growing your business you forget the little things of documenting um, so that would be one of the biggest things that I would recommend. And of course, staying compliant as you grow. Okay, and that, and that depends on the business you're in. Compliance is very important in some businesses. In another business, it's we have to stay compliant with the law, but we have a lot of variability and flexibility in how we do things. And when you say documenting process, we're not talking about HR things yet. We're talking about how do you do your job? How do you do your business? How do you make your widgets? Or how do you provide your service? Exactly. Because exactly. at some point, you're going to hire somebody, and you're going to say, here, go make these widgets, <laughs> right? And they're going to go, I don't know how to how make to do it. I don't know how to make widgets. And they're going to go, well, all the stuff is over there. And they're going to say, well, can you train me? And they're going to go, well. I don't have anything in place to train you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so so we are talking about some of the HR gotchas today. But where you can start is start documenting your processes. When you're making your widgets or you're getting your product and you're shipping it or you're providing your service, whatever that is, start writing it down. There's no, no substitute for writing it down. You don't have to stick with it and live with it forever. But start writing down what you're doing. So what are some of the recurring problems once a, once a business has started to document their processes and maybe they've got a couple of people hired on and things are starting to move smoothly, what are some of the recurring problems you see with HR and small businesses or even larger businesses? The biggest thing that I see in smaller and larger organizations is the ability to retain their employees. So they're at the beginning stages, you you know, you've made the hire, but how are you keeping them? What process, what do you have in place? Do you have incentive programs in place? How are they being recognized? A lot of times, you know, as you as your company grows, you tend to get lost in the shuffle and your employees are left behind. So we want you to refocus, create that culture so that you're, yourself as a business owner 
and your uh, your employees can grow with you. Yeah, creating that culture is so important. That's some of the stuff we at Evil Genius work on, the strategy of creating that culture and how and how you do that with people. Exactly. But writing that culture down and writing down the writing down those processes for training that culture and bringing people in, things like onboarding, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Right? <laughs> I was listening I was uh, either reading a book or listening to a podcast and if you don't onboard well, you lose people like, day one. Yes. You lose people day one there, and you, I think the statistic is if you lose them day one with bad onboarding, you may only you may keep the max sixty days in your company. Is that is that about is that does that match Very your true. experience? Very true. Very um, true. It you know if, <laughs> and this happens quite often. That's because you're you're not documenting your process you're not putting things in place that allows you to bring someone into your organization very smoothly and so once they have that horrible experience um, in the onboarding stage that kind of sets the pace for how the expectation of the company is going to be you know and so you want to be able to to make sure that whatever uh, culture that you create is something that is everlasting and that mm -hmm. employees can continue to grow within it. That's great. So if you're keeping score, I heard two things. I heard document that onboarding process yes. <laughs> and that onboarding process needs to not just be a nuts and bolts, turn the crank, follow the steps process. You need to think about the experience you're creating exactly. for those employees when you onboard them. If you want them to start to embrace the culture you've worked so hard to put in place in your company because your company's important to you and, and that culture is important and to it's you. your brand it's absolutely <laughs> so so important all right i want to make sure we get to this question because i had this conversation with someone the other day one of the areas employers can get into real trouble is by confusing independent contractors and employees <laughs> and there's a time and a place for both of those can you shed some light on this what is the difference and what do entrepreneurs and business owners need to be thinking about when it comes to am i bringing someone on as an independent contractor or am i bringing them on as an employee well, the biggest difference is um, an independent contractor is not an employee. <laughs> That's the major difference. Um, that being said, you know, an, an employee is someone that is essentially is on your payroll. You provide them with employee handbook. You provide mm -hmm. them with the ability to grow with your organization. Um, you, you know, you're creating that environment where. You know, you tell them exactly when to show up to work, how to show up to work, expectations while at work, while an independent contractor is really there as a support. Um, you know, depending on a particular project, they may be brought in. Um, if you're, you know, expanding and you need someone to um, essentially help you in that area, but they're not your employee and it's an agreement between yourself and the independent contractor mm -hmm. um, as it pertains to how they're going to support your organization. So is it fair to say, because I had this conversation with someone the other day, and I, the kind of the rule that I've had in my head is you can't tell them when to show up, you can't tell them what to wear, <laughs> exactly. you, can't, you can't tell them how to do stuff. You can say, I want you to do this yes. and I want you to give it to me by this date. Is exactly. that a fair assessment? Exactly. The contract so, is some, it's, so. an, it's a mutual agreement between yourself and the contractor and it usually has an end go, date. Go provide, you know, go work on this project or go provide this service exactly. to one of my clients exactly. and just, you know, call me when you've done it, right? Yes. <laughs> and then we'll all collect the money and we'll all be happy because we're all in business, right? Together, yes. So we're getting close to the end. Tell me who you you're looking to connect to. You're relatively new to Las Vegas. You're looking to connect and build your business. Who are you looking to connect to? I am looking to connect with startups and small businesses that just need that extra support and guidance as it pertains to their HR needs. Because, you know, you're starting your business and your focus is on growing, you don't essentially know right. or have the tools and resources. And someone like myself can come and help you with making sure that you're on the right path and staying compliant. Yeah. One, one of the things we talk about here a lot is business owners, general managers, senior leadership staying focused on strategy, strategy Stay exactly. not working on the business not in the business as the saying goes and someone like Shamar can help you out by bringing in her expertise to handle the nuts and bolts of what needs to get done and you can stay focused as your business is growing focused on growing it even further building those relationships you need to build in the community to get that business really going so how can our viewers get in touch with you to bring you in to help them out Yes, the best way to reach me is by phone. You can reach me at 702-979-2119. And of course, you can always visit my website at swhrconsulting.com. Thank okay. you. And are you on any social media they can reach you on? Yes, I am on all platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, 
all so, of it. So, so, so <laughs> just, search, just search H, uh, SW, SWH Arkansas. Just <laughs> search for it. It'll be good for her Google rankings. Uh, hit her up on social media. I know I'm going to go go add you so we can make sure we tag you for these you. posts uh, and these segments as they go up. I'm Jason LaDuke from Evil Genius Leadership Consultants. We'll be right back in a minute with Dr. Bianca Vallejo.